joining us today. My name is Ann Harkey and I'll be your host for this NASA Technology Transfer Program webinar on NASA's Remote Sensing Toolkit. Our presenter today is Dwayne Armstrong. Mr. Dwayne Armstrong is the Chief of the Advanced Technology and Technology Transfer Branch at NASA Center Space Center in Hancock County, Mississippi. An electrical engineer graduate of Mississippi State University, he has worked for NASA for 32 years. As part of his current role, Dwayne and his team ensure that technologies developed for NASA missions are broadly available to the public, maximizing the benefit to the nation. He was a leader in the development of the Remote Sensing Toolkit, which makes finding and using NASA satellite data easier than ever before. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to you, Dwayne. Thanks, Ann, and uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, we appreciate your interest in the Remote Sensing Toolkit. Now, during my years at NASA, I've had the opportunity to help create many different remote sensing instruments to uh, build technologies to improve the capabilities of the next generation of remote sensing systems. And as chief of our applied science uh, program here at Stennis Space Center, I led a team whose job was to help build the tools to make it easy for people who are not experts in remote sensing to utilize uh, the data and information that results from uh, those missions. So first, let's just start with, uh, let's get everybody on the same page on what do we mean when we say remote sensing. So if you just take sort of the dictionary definition, you'll see that remote sensing is measurement of a quantity associated with an object by a device not in direct contact with the object. That's a long-winded way of saying that you're observing some property of a system without actually being in physical contact with that system. Now, for those of you on this webinar, it may not be a surprise, but many people don't understand that NASA actually has a robust Earth science program. So that NASA operates a large constellation of Earth observation satellites. Uh, we collect a tremendous amount of data each year, and our scientists and engineers create a variety of tools to help people design instruments, to plan missions, and to access, analyze, and utilize the data that results from those missions. On this image, you'll see a, uh, a snapshot of the uh, Earth science missions that are currently active, as well as those that are planned to be launched uh, through the year 2023. These range from you know, very large, very sophisticated uh, satellites that carry an array of different instruments on board to much smaller uh, CubeSats that are the new frontier of NASA's Earth Science Program. But satellites are not always the best way to get the data that you need. So NASA also has a fleet of aircraft that we use to uh, conduct some remote sensing missions. Those are often used to help gather data to plan for upcoming satellite missions or to gather data to do the calibration and validation of those satellite missions or just to collect information at a, uh, at a scale or a, a repeat cycle that cannot easily be done via satellites. And even occasionally we'll use more, uh, uh, more unusual systems such as balloons for uh, collecting remote sensing data. So with all of these uh, different instruments and platforms available, you know, the most useful a platform really depends on your potential, particular application. So what information do you need? How much detail do you require? What's the resolution of the measurements? How frequently do you need that data? All of those things help determine the appropriate selection of instrument and platform for your application. And since we have such a wide array of spacecraft and other vehicles collecting data, you know, NASA's remote sensing outputs, you know, will occasionally make it into the popular press. So one example that you see here is an image uh, showing the soil moisture across the uh, United States. And you can see how it varies from region to region, with some areas being wetter than normal and some being much drier than normal. And obviously this type of data is of use to more than just earth scientists. If you're a farmer, 
or if you're working in the uh, commodities industry, or if you're in the crop insurance business, uh, there are many potential uses for, for these types of uh, data. This year, uh, there's certainly been a large number of significantly uh, large fires in the western part of the United States. So satellites provide a good framework for being able to observe what's going on at a very small scale, local to individual fires, or out at regional scale, such as you see in this image. But you can also aggregate that data along with other types of data and uh, put that into a global scale so that here you can see the red parts of the image are show the smoke from wildfires and you can see that in North America, in Africa, and in parts of Asia there have been significant wildfires this year. The light white to purple areas represent the dust coming out of major deserts such as the Sahara and the Gobi. And in this image, you can also see uh, several uh, large storms, such as typhoons and hurricane on opposite sides of the Pacific. So one of the benefits that we can provide is you have access to many different sources of information which you can aggregate in different ways and use that combination of data to extract features and gain insight that would not be possible from any one source by itself. This image is uh, a little bit old, but it's a really good uh, example of using remote sensing to do Earth, op I mean, ocean observations. This year, the state of Florida had particular problems with the formation of red tides and brown tides off its coast. But uh, NASA and the Naval Research Lab developed capabilities years ago to use satellites to predict the conditions that are likely to be conducive to the formation of those events. And that information is particularly helpful for those uh, areas that are prone to those kinds of outbreaks. But you have all this data, but it requires special tools in order to be able to use it effectively. The NASA's remote sensing instruments are precision measurement systems, but they're not perfect. And they're very varied. So in the upper left-hand image, you'll see radar data that's used to measure precipitation around the globe. In the, the center image is a gravimetric analysis that's used to study the geoid and the transport of uh, water, such as in aquifers around the globe. The bottom right-hand image is a LIDAR image that shows that's used to study atmospheric chemistry and the transport of aerosols around the planet. So as you can see, the types of instruments that we use vary significantly, and each one has its own strengths and weaknesses, but you also really must know what you're doing with that data in order to be able to use it effectively. So each of the instruments must be calibrated, they must be compensated for their various imperfections, and compensated for any interfering elements such as clouds or atmospheric attenuation. So if you're studying the atmosphere or the ocean or vegetation on land, there are a variety of these confounding variables that you really need to have a strategy to deal with. And as a result, NASA's science teams that work for the work on these different instruments create very sophisticated software and processes to analyze the data collected by their respective remote sensing platforms. So it's gotten easier in recent years. The process to find that appropriate combination of data and tools can be challenging. And that's where the remote sensing toolkit, or the RST, comes to the rescue. So the NASA's tech transfer program was approached by people from commercial industry wanting to know if there was a way to help address some of the challenges they were having in finding what NASA had available that might be a benefit to them. So the, the challenge is that NASA's remote sensing information is uh, about its data and tools is spread out across dozens and dozens and dozens of sites. So just as part of this program, our the team that was building the RST reviewed 135 different sources of information. But 
what we knew ahead of time and that survey just confirmed was that no source provided a comprehensive source of information nor a single access point to really begin a search. So if you didn't have a really good idea of where to start, then you were going to find it difficult or potentially find it difficult to find that right combination of data and tools that you needed for your application. So after we collected all the data from these various sites and began to analyze it, we created a, a strategy to leverage the existing tools while providing a value-added user interface and quick search capability. So the Remote Sensing Toolkit itself is not a new tool for processing remote sensing information. It really is this front end that helps you find the appropriate sources of data and tools for you to, uh, to shorten that search to find the existing tools that NASA already has. And so when we were looking how to organize this data, we basically grouped it into uh, the following categories. There's tools to help users search for remote sensing data itself. There are tools to help users analyze remote sensing data once you have that data. Those are just ready to go tools, you know, that uh, you can use as is. But there's also software out there that you can use to build your own tools to create your own custom workflows uh, to optimize them for your specific application. And so this is how we've structured the content within the Remote Sensing Toolkit. And so now we're going to do a uh, series of demonstrations, but for those of you that are interested in following along, you can see the URL for the toolkit down at the bottom of your screen, HTTPS, software.nasa.gov slash remote sensing. And when you click on that link, this is what you'll see. It'll take you directly to NASA's Remote Sensing Toolkit, and you can see the, the different categories uh, laid out just like you saw on the previous slide. So first, let's just go looking for some remote sensing data. So you click on that link, and you'll see that the toolkit just asks a series of very, very simple questions and a limited number of uh, options here, but it guides you through this process of filtering the data to find the tools that are most appropriate to you. And so in this case, let's, uh, let's click on the link for archived, and we'll go to Earth Data Search. And so Earth Data Search is a fantastic tool that allows people to uh, search for data uh, to do comparisons, visualizations, and, you know, and access data from a wide variety of uh, Earth data sources. As you can see, when you first show up, there's a, a tour that can give you some of the major features of the, the Earth data search tool. On the left-hand side, you can filter the data through a variety of uh, boxes, such as features, keywords, the different platforms that were used to collect the data, the different instruments uh, that were used to collect data, all the way down through, uh, you know, access to data that's either raw and untouched or that's been already processed and analyzed to various levels. The, uh, the Earth Data Search does require Earth Data Login, as you can see in the upper right-hand uh, part of the screen there. but. There's a, a large community of people that use this tool, and uh, there are many uh, resources to, to learn how to use it effectively. We'll go back to the Remote Sensing Toolkit, and we'll take go back and look for other data. And this time, we'll choose the other option. So we partition partition the data into two major categories. There's near real-time data and archive data. So if we click on the option for near real-time data, then we will follow the link to Lance. And Lance is a great tool for providing access to that near real-time data. And in this case, what uh, we mean is data that's been that's, that's available three to five hours after the initial observation. Uh, so that's basically our definition of near real time. 
and you'll see you know a variety of tools here that you can use to download that data uh, com comparisons of the near real time versus standard products uh, and a variety of other capabilities and then you can even see you know uh, a tool that is part of the Lance system such as firms fire information for resources management system and if we now go back to the toolkit so this time we're going to look for tools so we'll select the uh, the second icon and again the tools sort of mirror you know the the mapping of the data so there's tools for working with archive data and tools for working with near real time data so for this example, we'll choose archived, and you'll see the how NASA divides the Earth science data. So there's six main categories. There's atmosphere, calibrated radiance, cryosphere, human dimensions, land, and ocean. And so for this case, let's pick land. And now you'll see that a different set of options pop up. and Basically, you can choose between tools that provide data access, data manipulation, or data visualization and analysis. And in some cases, tools have you know more than one function, so they'll show up in more than one place under this list. But let's choose data visualization and analysis. And see, once again, on this list, you'll see firms. So there's multiple ways that you can find data by using uh, and tools by using the, the toolkit. And firms in itself is a particularly uh, interesting case because it's one that's it's a very useful tool that can be very challenging to find if you don't know how to look for it. But let's go, we'll go back to the toolkit. back to search for remote sensing data and uh, we'll go back to archived and this time we'll look for tools to work with atmospheric data we have the same set of options here and we'll pick data visualization and analysis again and up pops a list And a particularly interesting one on this list is Cove. So we'll follow the link to that site. And Cove is a tool that NASA built in partnership with the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites, or CIOS. And it's essentially a browser-based suite of tools for searching, analyzing, and visualizing both actual and potential satellite sensor coverage. So if you want to know when a satellite is going to pass overhead or if it's going to pass overhead or the, you know, where there might be gaps in coverage that you might want to address with other mechanisms, then COVE is a powerful tool to see that kind of data. It has a, a variety of tools built into a tool suite. So you can look at the forecast of uh, coverage, you can do you can look at uh, historical coverage uh, for an area of, uh, of interest. You can browse through data, uh, and there's even some utilities for doing quick calculations uh, with the data that's accessible via Cove. Uh, they have a video and other information uh, that can help users learn how to, uh, to better utilize these kinds of capabilities. And like many of these tools, they have a contact us button so that if you have questions or need assistance, there's ways for you to reach out to the developers of those tools. And if we go back to the toolkit, and we'll go back to mode sensing data tools one more time and archived. This time we'll go down and look at the tools to analyze human dimensions. And 
in this case, the tool we're going to use is uh, shows up in all three of these different categories, so it doesn't really matter which one we choose. So uh, we'll choose data access. And we'll go to the change viewer. This is a, uh, a tool that you can download and use to access, analyze, and visualize earth science data. The, the real novel feature of this is that it focuses on the issues that are rele relevant to human interactions with the environment. So there's data about the environment and the effects of hazards on populations, property, and locations. Uh, so in the screenshot that you can see here, they've loaded up uh, data about cyclone tracks per year and overlaid that across the globe. And certainly those sizable storms, as has been seen recently, can uh, be significantly disruptive to populations. Uh, so, but this is a, a great tool to uh, use to visualize some of those uh, trade-offs there. And we go back to the toolkit. And this time, we're going to go to the Build Your Own Tools link. And here you'll see a different set of categories that have been broken out. So you can search for tools that help with uh, functions such as data management, data preparation and processing, data analysis, data visualization, and data collection. And this is a particularly interesting category because Though most of what we've talked about up to this point was about data and tools to work with data, this section also has tools that can help you design instruments to plan and conduct missions as well as to actually work with the data that results. But let's go to data analysis. And you have two options, the toolkit and tools and the systems. And we will select a toolkit. And the first one on the list is the Application Research Toolbox. And this is an example of a tool that's available through NASA's actual software catalog. This is a set of MATLAB functions that are useful to perform uh, design trade studies and statistical analyses to support the development of particularly multispectral imaging systems. And for those that are interested in software that's in the catalog, then at the bottom of the description, there's a button where you can just press that to request it now. You fill out a, so a small form, and uh, people will be in touch with you regarding your, your request for those types of tools. We'll go back to the uh, toolkit home page. We'll go back to Build your own tools. This time we'll go to the data collection. And you can see options to choose from aircraft and satellite. So there's information in here about both of those types of platforms. We'll choose satellite. And we'll scroll down to the global precipitation radar, space and ground radar comparison. And that, if you're not familiar, the, the global precipitation missions are a constellation of satellites to measure precipitation over approximately 80% of the globe with about a three-hour average reset time. So it's very near real-time data about precipitation around the globe, which is uh, extremely useful data to have. But the benefit of this particular tool is that it's used to compare data uh, to similar measurements from uh, ground-based uh, networks and radars to identify and resolve any of the discrepancies between those two systems so that the data can be uh, uh, verified to its level of utility and any discrepancies can be addressed. So this is an example of a different class of software that's used for doing the calibration and validation of remote sensing systems, which is a, 
a very important part of building any kind of uh, application is to make sure that you understand just what the limitations of your data really are. And so if we go back one more time to the toolkit, and this time we'll go to the search capability, and we'll just type in you know, a word uh, that of, of interest, fire. And once again, here's another way of finding firms, the Fire Information Resource Management System. This time we'll go to that system. And there's a, a large variety of data about uh, fires around the world here. If we click on the fire map. And you can see this interactive display of uh, fires across the globe. On the right-hand side, you can see that the, the three different instruments that uh, feed information into this system from the VIRS, MODIS Aqua, and MODIS Terra satellites. On the left-hand side, you can see that there's a variety of ways you can get active fire data that you can work with offline. You can get uh, uh, personalized alerts sent to you for uh, about new fires. Uh, so there's a multitude of ways to use this data. Okay. And with that, I think uh, we'll, that'll be the end of the demos, and we will go back to the presentation. So just to wrap up, so the Remote Sensing Toolkit is new, but using NASA Science data, Satellite data to, commer to create commercial products certainly is not. In this information age, this enormous archive of both real-time and historical data, as well as the tools to use it effectively, has significant untapped potential for commercialization, and uh, we, we hope that some of you will uh, explore those opportunities. The process to find the NASA tools and the data sources that NASA has created to analyze and utilize data from these systems is familiar to many science users, but is potentially dawning for new users or new our users coming from different backgrounds. So the Tech Transfer Program created the Remote Sensing Toolkit to enable all users uh, of wide variety of backgrounds to quickly be able to determine if NASA has uh, relevant sources of information uh, for your particular application. So the RST helps users search for data, as well as uh, ready-to-use tools and code to help build your own tools and custom workflows. And certainly, uh, please go to the, the website, uh, software.nasa.gov slash remote sensing, to learn more about the uh, remote sensing toolkit and to explore it yourself.